our week two update video. This is Professor Hassey. It's Saturday morning. I'm a, I'm a day late this week. I apologize. It's Saturday morning, April 16th, and this is our update video for our second week of online study. Financial statements and analysis is our topic this week, chapters three and four. You have an assignment this week due Sunday at midnight, April 16th or 17th, sorry, Easter Sunday. I apologize for that also. Such are the horrors of online learning. Uh, the assignment is posted and it's uh, ready to go. Uh, again, here is the uh, f file folder for that. You download one or two of the, these files. They're both the same. Do your work and repost it. In other words, when you repost it, you click on the file folder here. Up will come a uh, upload uh, section. You go down here and you go to attach files and you go to browse your local files. You go to your computer, your flash drive and select a file, hit open. And once you hit open, that file will be uploaded and it'll be officially uploaded when you hit submit. You hit submit and then I will get your work and then I will work on the grades on Monday. Uh, so that's how you upload a file folder. This assignment is 10% of your course grade. If you have difficulties in posting, uh, please let me know. I will not accept email posts of any work in this class unless you have a legitimate excuse. So let me know if you're having difficulties posting. You can post if you post the file and then you find out, well, maybe I better, I found a mistake or I got to fix it. You can repost it as many times as you like. So you don't have to worry about deleting your original post or anything like that. Just do the regular procedure and to submit your file again. All right. That's our work for this week. Again, this week's uh, topic is uh, in week number two file folder, financial statements and analysis. Uh, we had our lecture video earlier in the week. We're covering chapters three and four. Uh, I have a review problem, which I'm gonna talk a little bit about in uh, just a few minutes. And you have your uh, graded assignment this week. Again, every week our learning assignments will be available in Blackboard and you can get a good idea about what that is, uh, what your work is going to be for the next week. And I will post these learning assignments every Sunday morning for the upcoming week so you can get a head start on your work for next week. Again, next week in week three, we have another assignment. We only cover one chapter, chapter five, and it's the same procedure. So lecture video on Monday, and then an update video on uh, Friday, even though this week it's on Saturday. So that's where we stand in this class. Again, make sure you communicate with me about if you're having any issues or concerns. This class goes rather quickly, and uh, the, so does the work. So you need to stay on top of it and make sure you're or you're staying up to date with your work and postings. Again, if you come to Sunday and you're having difficulty with timing, with whatever, and I understand that, you can get an extension on your work uh, for the week. In other words, you can post on Monday, you can post on Tuesday if you'd like. Just remember, do you, you the, the, if you postpone work, you're still gonna have to do other work in addition in the next week. So if you do want some extra time with your assignments, uh, please send me an email and let me know you would like to get an extension. You don't have to give me the reason why, but I'm gonna get a little suspicious week after week if a certain student go half for extensions that to me may make sure they're not doing their planning or organization very well. But again, I understand due to the COVID situation, work, family, Easter weekend, if you do need some extra time in posting your week, work, please let me know. But you have to let me know because at midnight on Sunday, that's when the file closes and you would not be able to access the file to post work unless I turn it off for you. So please uh, uh, let me know if you need an extension every week and when you anticipate posting your work, I'd appreciate it. Okay, very good. Okay, in addition to our assignment this week, I have an in-class review spreadsheet that defines financial statements 
the balance sheet, the income statement, and the statement of cash flow. Also talking about financial analytic ratios. And in those, in the week number two, under review problems, there's two files you should be concerned about. First of all, the spring 2, 2022 week two in-class review spreadsheet, which gives samples of financial statements and analysis that you will need. Also, in addition to that is a uh, PDF version of page 105 of your textbook, which gives the definitions and formulas for key financial statement indicators. So those two files would be your review problems or review files for this week. I also, in the review pro problems for week two, give you a uh, another version or my updated version of the class portfolio. Some of you are still having issues on making sure you have the correct market indexes valuations. And here is the version of my inter inter interpretation of the portfolio with the updated uh, values of the uh, market indexes through Friday, April 8th. So if you're having difficulties with that, download that class portfolio spreadsheet and get your spreadsheet up to date and accurate because you're going to need that information for future assignments in this class. So let's take a look at page 105 of our textbook. And here it is right here. And these all are all the key indicators that are defined and talked about in chapter four. And you are in the, in the review spreadsheet that we're going to look at in a minute are the key indicators that you specifically need to know, especially coming to do with assignment number one. And assignment number two, you'll do some work in this as well. First of all, the profitability ratios. More specifically, profit margin on sales. The asset management ratios. More specifically, day sales outstanding, inventory turnover. Liquidity ratios, current ratio. Debt management ratios, debt to assets ratio. More specifically, price earnings ratio. These are the key ones that you need to be familiar with for future work and current work. And those are the definitions there. And the definitions are described in chapter four of your text. So here's that spreadsheet that we began in our lecture video on Monday to talk about where I give you some financial statements of a real company the Reggie Dunlop com company, the names have been changed and some of the numbers have been changed to protect the innocent, but you can get the overall feel of what a financial statement is. Remember, financial statements provide historical review of a company. Are we maximizing the value of the company for our investors? Who are the investors of a company? Banks and financial institutions who lend you money. Bondholders, individuals who lend you money stockholders who purchase your stock and fund the capital by buying stock and investing in your company, hedge funds, venture capital funds, private investors that invest in your company. These are the investors that you provide these financial statements for so you can explain to them how you're doing. Also, more and almost just as important is that financial statements provide data for future planning and financial management. And these financial statements are the balance sheet, the income statement, and the cash flow statement. And we reviewed those in our lecture video on Monday. Also, chapter four talks about taking a look at trend analysis, historical analysis, comparative analysis of your financial statements. And these are the key indicators that I have indicated that you need to be familiar with, understand how to calculate and know their definitions and apply it in your assignments to a company that you have selected in your portfolio. The current ratio is the liquidity ratio of a company. The formula is the current assets divided by the current liabilities of a company. It explains the relationship of what you have short-term ownership to short-term debt. Naturally, a, a good ratio has to be over one. 
And as you can see, our company in 2020 had a 1.46 current ratio. And in 2021, they had a 2.58 current ratio. Why did that go up dramatically? As we talked about in our lecture video on Monday, their receivables and inventories had a dramatic increase in 2021. Thus, their liquidity ratio went up. The debt ratio is the relationship of debt to the total assets of a company. In other words, how much of your assets are funded by borrowing money, both short-term debt and long-term debt. Remember, long-term debt is interest-bearing debt. You have to pay interest on that. Short-term debt accounts payable, accruals, or debt that you have to settle within 30 days, usually, but there's no interest involved. The debt ratio for this company in 2020 was dramatically high, almost 81%. In 2021, it went down to 44%. Why? Well, remember in our discussion on Monday, this company issued additional common stock and they took the money that they got from that issuance of common stock and reduced their debt position by $900,000. They dramatically decreased their debt position, making it look a little bit better, but at the same time, taking that valuable capital of issuing stock and paying off prior debt. No investment in the future, and that can pose a problem later on down the line. The company's profit margin is a profitability ratio, which is net income divided by sales. It shows for every dollar of sales, how much are you making in a profit? Less expenses. In 2020, they lost money for this company. In 2021, they made a profit of roughly about 3.6%. A little bit better, but notice the industry average for this company is about five and a quarter percent profit margin. This company is not competitive with the industry average or their competition. The return on assets is, again, a relationship of profit, net income to the total assets of the company. Remember, assets are things that a company owns, and those ownership of those assets produce profits, produce revenue, produce cash flow. This company had naturally lost money in 2021, so they had a negative return on total assets. But that turned to a positive to 7.21% in 2021 when they made a profit. And that still is below the industry average of 9.0%. Again, the industry average is something that you can look at because it compares yourself to your com competitors and see how you're doing. And a lot of investors, a lot of bankers look at this relationship when they think about investing in your business. The next ratio is called the price earnings ratios, which is the relationship of the stock price to the earnings per share of a company. Well, let's take a look at what earnings per share is. Earnings per share is the net income of the company divided by the outstanding shares of common stock. Well, you notice in the first year, uh, in 2020, they lost money and they had roughly about 100,000 100, shares of stock. Then, then they increased their shares of stock in 2021. Remember, they issued more shares. Here's that information here, up to 250,000 shares of stock. So we're dividing the net income 253.584 by the stock outstanding 250 to get our earnings per share in 2021. And that is a dollar and one cents. That's our earnings per share for every dollar of stock this is the profit being accepted. Well, if you know this, remember we talked about this on Monday, if our earnings per share is a dollar one, which we just calculated, and remember on Monday, we talked about the dividend being paid out, which was $55,000 or 22 cents a share in dividend. So if our dividend is 22 cents a share, that means we're retaining 79 cents a share of profits in our business. And when you break it down on a per share basis, 
many investors like to see that. If you look at, read the newspaper or watch the business shows, uh, business channels, they're always talking about earnings per share. It's an easy way of explaining profitability instead of just giving a bunch of numbers. Our earnings last year were a dollar one. A lot of people like that. Well, the relationship of that earnings per share to the price of the stock is the relationship that oops, many investors look at because many investors look at because it shows the marketability of your stock. Remember, in 2020, we had an earnings per share of negative 95 cents, and that was as a relationship to the stock price of six dollars a share in 2020. Well, in 2021, we had a stock price at the end of the year of $12.17. The relationship of that $12.17 to the earnings per share of $1 is roughly 12 times greater. And what that means is the stock price is 12 times greater than the earnings per share in the market. Now, why that is important, the higher the price earnings ratio, in other words, 15, 20, 25, 30, 40 to one, means that the stock is really higher priced and overvalued compared to the earnings that it's justifying, that it's making. A higher PE ratio means the stock is overvalued. The lower the price earnings ratio means the stock is undervalued. Many investors buy stock when their PE ratio is rather low, hoping that the stock price will go up over time and that it will achieve return on their investment. Price earnings ratio is a market indicator in a relationship of what the company is generating in profits per share to what the market thinks the stock price is. And we'll be doing some PE ratio analysis in our portfolio during our midterm examination. So these are the key relationships, the key ratios that you need to be familiar with going forward in this class and also in assignment number one. And speaking of assignment one, here's the questions on the assignment this week that have to do with the work we just talked about from chapters three and four. Question number seven uh, explains in, in a paragraph some financial information and you are to take that financial information and transfer it into telling me three bits of information. One, determine the earnings before interest and taxes, which is also called EBIT earnings before interest and taxes. Number two, what is the net income of this company? What is their net profit after revenue and expenses? And finally, number three, what, are, what is the cash flow from operations for this firm? You need to calculate those three numbers using chapter three as your guide and our lecture points about those financial statements. Question number eight is talking about chapter four. Define for me the firm's leverage, liquidity, efficiency, and profitability. What do those four things mean and their significance? This is chapter four. Chapter nine is from chapter th uh, three again. Define a profit and loss statement, another name for income statement. What does it tell you about a firm? who uses it and why is it important? Chapter four is the subject of question number 10. And this applies to your portfolio. What is the earnings per share? What does it earnings per share mean? What does it indicate to a firm and to an investor? Select one company from your portfolio and find the last three fiscal years. Fiscal year means their business year. What is the firm's earnings per share for the last three fiscal years? How have they changed over those three years? So this is 2022. So you're probably going to need 2021, 2020, 2019 earnings per share for your one particular company, not the whole portfolio, you select one. 
You have to do a little internet research on that. And that I leave up to you. Question 11, same thing. Find for the last two fiscal years from the company that you've selected for this assignment, the current ratio, the debt ratio, and the profit margin, those three financial ratios. A brief comment for each on what they represent as an analysis for the company. A brief comment means a sentence. Don't forget that. Many students go ahead and calculate the numbers and get the numbers, but then they don't explain it and they lose points. So don't forget that. Now, where do you get this information? Where can you find this information? Well, this information can be found on the internet by going to Google and searching the company and go to the company's website and look up their financial statements and data. That's one source. You can go to uh, the, um, the, the company's, uh, you can go to the Securities and Exchange Commission and get the company's 10K statement for the quarter, which gives this information, the 10K of this state company. But another way of finding this information and perhaps a little bit easier, but at first a little bit more complicated is going to your own resources at the Wilson Library at the University of Laverne. As you can see on your screen, here's the University of Laverne website. Well, there's all kinds of data available for you as an online student, just like being on campus and at the various regional campuses at the University of Laverne. You can go directly to the University of Laverne website and find data. You go to academics and pull down the academics and go to the Wilson Library. And there's the library's website, all kinds of information for you as a student to, to use. You go to databases and it brings up all the databases that are available for you as a student. You pay for this in your student fees, all the information available to you to use in all your courses. You go to specifically the business database and we're going to look up what is called D&B Hoover's. It says here, best bet. This gives you a listing of all kinds of American and world corporations, public corporations available with their data about their business, D&B Hoover's database. Before I look at that database, here's a couple of information resources for you if you have a problem. You're a business student at Laverne. You have a librarian assigned to you. Her name is Linda Gordon, and she is there to help you with your research with using the internet and the library resources. Linda Gordon, there's her phone number. You can email her, you can book a Zoom appointment. She can help you with any information you need and cannot locate, she's there to help you. And she's a very nice person. So also you can come to me too and I can help you as well. So you click on D and B Hoovers and up you'll have to log in to the database, you know this database and this services are not available to anybody. You have to be a student at the University of Laverne. So you log in with your email address and your password. And up comes the database, DNB Hoover's. And the DNB Hoover's database is a database of information that is supplied by all publicly traded corporations in America. Remember, a publicly traded corporation has to, by law, produce and supply all their financial data to the public. So let's say you, pay, you have a company in your portfolio called Disney, Walt Disney. You type in Disney in the search and up comes the Disney company, all right? What you need to do is you need to go to Walt Disney and it gives you a bunch of information, but you're more concerned and usually with the very top one, Disney Parks and Recreation or the whole Disney company. And there's the Disney company. 
all their employees, all the information, all the information about the company. Now in this data, it'll give you all kinds of information about what the company is all about, who they are, where they're located, but also more importantly for you, it also lists financial data. And in this financial data, you can get all information about the company, their financial records, their ratios, they're all there, all available to you. And this is as far as I'll go in explaining this. It's up to you now to go and find the company that you selected and use this DNB Hoover's database. That's another source that is available to you to access data. So you can go to Google, you can go to a lot of, you can go to the company website, but here's a source within your control that you can find a lot of specific data about companies. And also, as a student of the University of Laverne, you have access to this for life, even after you leave and graduate. You gotta graduate in order to get this service. If you just drop out of school, you will no longer be able to get it. But if you graduate, you can use this service for life. And I use this service a lot as a staff member to look up information about companies that I'm interested in. It's a great source of data. So please take advantage of this. And even if you don't wanna use it in our work, it's there available for you for all types of classes that you study at Laverne. So there's an update video for you this Saturday morning to chew on for the next day or so to uh, finish your assignment number one and uh, get to know the internet and doing some research with your data that's required in all your assignments and midterms and examinations in this class. So again, if you have any problems access, accessing your data or understanding what you're trying to do, I'll be available this weekend for questions. Remember, we always have our student hours every Wednesday night, but that won't do you any good with assignment number one. And also take note of the extensions that are available for you to use in our course uh, to post late postings of your work should you get in a situation where you can't finish it on time. All right, everybody, have a great Easter weekend. All the best to you and your families. Stay healthy. And we'll see you on our lecture video on Monday, April 18th. Have a wonderful holiday.